Hi everyone, welcome back to the Dish on Aging. Today is April 4th, 2021, and so that makes it Easter Sunday. Happy Easter, everyone. Today is episode 15, and we will be talking about the question, what are the strengths and vulnerabilities of aging? How this topic came about is because I've been talking with people about um, just the vulnerability of aging and how different people respond to that. Uh, some people might get very anxious, some might get distressed, some might get angry. Um, to how they face their own vulnerability and the vulnerability of loved ones. So I just pretty much decided this needed to be a topic for, for this venue. And then I decided that we need to make sure not to be ageist. Of course, we know ageism is to look at aging always from a derogatory negative perspective. And aging is not derogatory. So to take a anti-ageist stance, I thought it was important today that we look at both the vulnerabilities and the strengths that come with getting older, because we will be experiencing both at the same time. And that what's good about that is we will be able to use our strengths, the abilities, the wisdom we have as we get older to help us alleviate the sense of anxiety and, I don't know, angst we may feel about our the vulnerability of our own aging process. So why don't we take a few minutes now and let's hear from Gamma S, who when she heard about today's topic, she was very interested in learning more so that she can try to help her friends deal with anxiety that they experience. So here's Gamma. Hi everyone, Gamma S here. Happy Easter to everyone out there. What an important topic we're talking about today. So many of my friends get very anxious about even thinking about becoming old. Some just say they fear getting old, some will talk about fears of being alone. Some will talk about fears of being in pain. Some will talk about being left without needed care. And I just tell them, just because we fear these things, they probably will not happen. In fact, there's a good chance they will not happen. Aren't we all just afraid of the unknown? Aren't we just afraid of the negatives of getting older? We need to come up with a way that we can come to peace, being at peace with being older, and have a plan that we put in place that addresses each one of our fears so that we can grow old and we can grow frail without needing to be afraid of the bad reality of life. All right, I look forward to today's presentation. I'm here with my notebook and my pen, and I'm gonna take notes on this so I can share this with my friends throughout the week. Take care, see you next week. Gamma, thank you so much for giving your perspective and the perspective that your friends um, report to you about this topic. And I am just so flattered that you're taking notes so that you can share what is discussed today with your friends throughout the week. That is, is really fantastic. Also, you can tell your friends about the Dish on Aging YouTube video series that is available for free. Just go into YouTube and you can just type in Dish on Aging, or you could just Google my name, Dr. Maureen Sweeney, Dish on Aging, and the YouTube video series should come up. Okay, so let's talk about the vulnerabilities of aging. So the reality is we do get 
physically more vulnerable as we get older. That comes from loss of physical strength. That comes from increased susceptibility to medical disease. Think COVID. You know, if you were older than age 50, just statistically, you fell in a different category. Some realistically and legitimately had more reasons to feel, feel threatened by COVID than others. It's just a reality of life. Other vulnerabilities come from um, loss of strength. Some people say, oh boy, I didn't even realize my age until I was, you know, walking down the street late at night. And it occurred to me, somebody could, you know, try to mug me. And when I was 20, 25, 30, I thought I was 10 foot tall and bulletproof. I probably wasn't, but we are much more aware that when we have less strength, when we're walking down the street, and unfortunately we've been seeing this in the news um, with some of the racial attacks, and they're not going after younger men and women who may have the ability to defend themselves. The thugs are more than a thug. He's actually a convicted murderer. Went after the Asian woman on a walking to church. I think it was last weekend. So we are a little bit more vulnerable um, to, for safety reasons when we are older. And not very unlikely that we will be the target of a crime. But it's much more likely that we're going to have to go outside and walk on a slick sidewalk or walk on an, uh, hopefully not icy, but a snowy sidewalk. If we fall, we are much more likely to become injured. I think it's like over age 50 than we are when we, when we are younger. So there are physical vulnerabilities to aging. I had somebody say to me a few years ago, she was sitting on a plane. She had requested a seat next to the emergency exit because she gets more leg room. Occasionally, she is asked to move because you have to visibly not, you have to be able to physically lift that door off in case the whole plane has to evacuate. And many people realize that if you can book a seat on that row, you get more leg room and you don't have to pay more money necessarily. So um, that's always been an issue. But this person said to me, she was approaching her next birthday. I think that birthday was 80. And it occurred to her that, God forbid, if the entire plane had to use that emergency exit, jumping down that chute could kill her. And she almost started having panic attacks just thinking about it. And this was someone who traveled a lot. She flew on airplanes a lot throughout her own life and was asking, why is it all of a sudden I'm having panic attacks over it? Um, and she was able to almost answer her own question because she just learned she had osteoporosis. Uh, she went in to be evaluated and she had a sore ankle or leg and that's how she found out that just walking she had accidentally fra fractured a bone because of the osteoporosis so she's trying to figure out what jumping out of a plane down the emergency chute would do and I said to her I said here's how to think about it can you reasonably go fly can you reasonably fly and the answer is yes and so then the healthy response is yeah then just, you can't worry about it. You are more vulnerable, but just do the best you can. Fly safe, be as safe as you can when you travel. Um, and then just assume the risk. The alternative is, and some people do make the choice not to fly anymore, not to travel anymore, not because they think they're going to have to go out the emergency chute, um, but just because they realize they're more vulnerable, uh, particularly with a decline in level of functioning, uh, have a lot more medical concerns, and it uh, can be much more difficult to manage those when one is in an unfamiliar environment. So the idea is, yes, we do have these vulnerabilities when we notice them and key on noticing them um, because we've always been vulnerable. You roll out of bed in the morning, you get dressed, you go out your front door. We are vulnerable to so many things, and we're sometimes become aware of the vulnerability of our aging. So make a note of it, it is real, and then come up with a plan for yourself so that you can feel comfortable with your new vulnerability. Your vulnerability is a new normal. 
And part of developing, part of growing as you get older is to come to terms with, learn to come to peace with the idea of, yes, I am more vulnerable when I walk down the street. And it's probably not going to be a mugging. It's more likely to be tripping and falling. And then decide, do you want to make a, you know, you've been fortunate enough to live, in my case, 42, I'm sorry, 52 years. Um, do I want to continue to go out of the house and assume that vulnerability and celebrate the number of years that I've had? Or does it make sense for me to stay home? And it, you have to decide what works for you. Um, and it can be important to kind of embrace your anxiety. When I was in graduate school back in the 1990s, we used to have this saying, it was a book somebody wrote about anxiety. And the name of the book was Anxiety is Your Friend. <laughs> the idea was we get anxious when there is a, a known threat in the environment. And, and a threat might be like anxious about studying an exam, threat being um, fear, the threat of failure or lack of success, or in some cases, fear of success. So anxiety is your friend because anxiety gives you information about yourself and the world around you. And then once you embrace anxiety as your friend, then you're empowered to work with it and to move forward. And that's what I encourage everyone to do who may start feeling overwhelmed and recognizing your vulnerabilities with aging. And most of all, what a blessing to live a long life. And I think that's where we all need to start. Um, and for me, it's a blessing to live to midlife. I've lost friends to cancer before they had a chance to celebrate their 50th birthday. So um, it is it, to honor them that I make sure to celebrate my aging and the vulnerability that goes with it. Because um, you can't have one without the other. Now let's talk about the strengths of aging. I saw there was a, a media clip on this. I didn't read it this week, but it's the same concept. The things that people appreciate about getting older. And when I say getting older, think of uh, retirement age and older. Um, and the absolute strength. Oh, look. See, I have to get my reading glasses because of the older eyes. Uh, strengths in aging, you really do get wiser as you get older. And that is generally true. Some of you won't. Some of you will say, I'm as adolescent and childlike as I was back in high school. That is going to be absolutely a fact for some of you. But the vast majority of people do get wiser. And I'm going to use a cliche in our society now. And that cliche is, you really do know things. You really do. Um, it's a cliche um, for some kind of young adult movies for somebody to make mention of the fact they know things. And it's funny because they probably don't. And that's the joke of it. And when you get older, um, the more life experience we have, we really do know things. We know ourselves. We understand the world. Um, we understand the world a lot better. We, we have a much clearer sense of what we value. And we also have the ability to kind of eliminate the nonsense around us. We we really do. And, and that is, all of that, I think I just summed up the wisdom of aging. And because we know things, that puts us in a position where we can have a better quality of life. Sure, we might have more vulnerability, and anxiety that goes with that vulnerability, but we have a, a deeper understanding of quality, quality of relationships, quality of activity, um, how we want to spend our time. And that is the beauty of aging. It's one of the reasons why I got into geriatrics as a psychologist. We really are at a point in our lives where we just because of our life experiences, everything we've been through, we are in a position to have a um, much clearer idea of what we're looking for in terms of quality of life. Think back to your 20s and your 30s. You probably had an idea 
of what your view of quality of life was. And by the time you were at your late 30s into your 40s, you realized, oh my gosh, <laughs> was was that a whole bunch of, I don't even know what, um, lack of reality or just false ideas of what's valuable or important. So, um, so anyway, embrace the strength that comes with aging. Also, many people talk about a basic confidence in themselves uh, because of competence with how they handle their emotions, uh, competence in their, their jobs, the work they do. So there is just tremendous strength in, in aging that goes right along with the vulnerability. And you're going to need your strength. You're going to need your wisdom at times to help you I don't know, get a handle of sometimes that anxiety of, oh my gosh, I'm getting older. What am I going to do if I can't drive? And, and, you know, kind of anxiety is your friend. Embrace that. Use that information to come up with your plan so that, that you can move forward happy and healthy. There you have it. The good, the bad, and the ugly, and the of the sometimes emotional experience of getting old and how it impacts your daily life. Okay, so next week I will be talking about the question, does, does avoiding a problem ever help? And the quick answer is yes. You will be surprised. We hear a lot, you know, you, ignoring a problem will, will only make it worse. Well, that's only half of the picture. And next week I'm going to be talking about the other half of the picture and when you're going to come out ahead, what, 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 have to, what will have to be the characteristics of a problem that if you ignore that problem, you will come out ahead. Whereas if you try to tackle that problem, you won't come out ahead and think, you know, the bang the head against the wall is scenario is never good for anyone. So I look forward to talking with you all next week and have a great day. Thanks. Bye bye.